I was talking to your 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 brother and and even Ian a little bit, and they said that you were in pretty bad shape. Yeah, I woke up and I had no idea that it was that bad. Like mm-hmm. I, I woke up and everybody's like, "You had a motorcycle wreck." I was like, "Okay, so when do I get out of here?" They were like, "Dude, they you had a traumatic brain injury." I was like, "No, I didn't." They were like, "Dude, they glued your skull back together." I was like, "What?" And uh, they said my elbow shattered into eighteen pieces. And, uh, like all the doctors are like, there's no way of putting this back together. And then one doctor walked your in. elbow. Yeah. And then one doctor walked in and was like, hold my beer and, uh, did it. <sighs> That's crazy. Yeah. Man. It's crazy. I was like, dang, I couldn't imagine living without an elbow. I was like, why don't you just 3d print the damn thing? Uh, but yeah. So now I, now it's just recovery time, but it's crazy. Like waking up. And a month and a half had passed by. Yeah, it was damn near two months, yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? And I lost, I went, I lost, I think, 60 pounds. Yeah, you lost a bunch of weight. Yeah, I turned, uh, I lost all my muscle mass and stuff like that. And then, like I said, my hands, like, I mean, it's getting better, but still can't really do, I can't open it fully unless I, like, like try to stretch it out myself. Yeah, so, yeah. it sucks, man. yeah. So how long until you think you can get back to tattooing? I mean, they're trying to say it's a year to a year and a half from the accident. I'm like, yeah, you know me. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to tattoo in like the next two months. Uh, I, I got mean, the, I got the rehabilitation glove waiting at the house. My dad got me for Christmas, so it hurts to close your hand, huh? It hurts to close and it hurts to open. It's just uh, they said because it just was like I'm like in a. Coma. You lost pretty much all your core strength. That and my ten, since I'm not using it, my tendons started to recede and tighten up. So I have to stretch those all mm. back out. I have to stretch out all my tendons, which sucks. That's crazy, man. That sucks. I mean, that's what happened. Like, that's my fault. Like, I was riding without a helmet. That's my fault. If you're going to ride a motorcycle, wear a fucking helmet. Well, how many times have I told you that? Oh, every time, all the time. You That or stop fucking riding. But I mean, it's in my riding motorcycles is like tattooing for me, it's just in my blood. That's what I'm going to do until I die. But, yeah, that was just being stupid. And, uh, I mean, and what sucks is that they put me at fault because I couldn't make a statement. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You put me at fault because I was in a coma? That's unfair. Because the lady came over and she takes out the front. Oh, they put you at fault. And she took out the front tire of my bike. I was doing 35 miles an hour on a bike that... Only fifteen hundred were made. There wasn't a scratch on that thing. That was my pride and joy. Do you know why you got into an accident? Uh, What's the name of your bike? Oh, an El Diablo. Hard Boom! It's an El Diablo. The devil, man, <laughs> got your ass. Yeah, I mean that thing was definitely a death machine. When you got the bike, I told you why. Why do you need that? I was trying to stunt. <laughs> but some like people ask me why. Why do you need the Batmobile? I'm like, I don't know. I just need it. Yeah. Well, I mean, my road glide burst into flames like Ghost Rider. Oh, you should have kept riding that one all the way then. (laughs) But uh, what's crazy is I was like, it was that bad. And my brother told me, he was like, yeah, dude, you got up. We're apparently bleeding out of both your ears and gave me a phone call and told me what happened. Yeah, buddy. Like I was coherent. I'm like, what? You don't remember that, though. I don't remember shit. See, that's the whole thing. When I talked to you, you said you don't remember saying that stuff to me either. I remember exiting and knowing that there was a car two lanes over about at least nine car lengths ahead of me, maybe something like that. And, uh, and then I woke up, I in tried a, to get a the hospital. There was a point I wanted a Harley and then Kim, what'd you say to me, Kim? Hell no. See, hey, you can stay on if you want. She's smart. It's like, if it's not, it, I tell everybody like, um, there was somebody. Oh yes. I forgot to introduce this is Kim, my wife. Hello. She's producing it. She so my daughter helps when it's like more kid friendly. Chris is a loose cannon, so we got a guy. I don't want people judging me. Okay. Yeah. Bring in the reins. But so. uh, as far as as far as when people are like they're like I want to ride a motorcycle, I tell them no, mm-hmm. and they're like why? I go, it's a survival game. But why? So then why do you do it? It's just it's it's like breathing for me. I can't do. I can't not do it. Like. Uh, when it's raining, I'm still on my bike. I, it's just what I do. I mean, I can't say like, oh, you're stupid, but because everybody has different passions. I have friends like you that 
they all die on the motorcycle. They don't, that's their love. Like they love that shit, you know? There's but, free, it's, it's just like tattooing. There's freedom in it. When I get on that bike and I'm riding, the world shuts off. I've, mm -hmm. there's, there's no stress. I'm not thinking about anything, but just riding. Like it's just, it's just freedom. I don't need to go 120 miles an hour. I'm as happy going 10 miles an hour as 60. It's just the point of being on the bike. That's it. It's just like not tattoo, like tattooing. When I tattoo, yeah. the world shuts off. Yeah. For I'm me, the happiest when I'm tattooing. For me, tattooing is like, that's like my own therapy. It's my own yoga, I guess, for my mind. Yes. And it helps me, but it's exhausting. Like next year, uh, I am going to only work like four days a week. I really need to stick strict to that because I just, I, I'm over getting burned out and working five, six days a week sometimes. Well, you're a family man too. Like it, yeah, it, yeah. If, it, it, if you have a family tattooing can take away from your, but family also time. another thing too is with me slowing down, it's to more so level up again. It's, it's for me to take my tattooing to another level no human being can do that work in five, six days a week. You're oh, going to no. get to a point of like a peak and you're going to stay there because yeah. you're not giving yourself to recharge time to recharge and look at everything in more depth, like a design and say, okay, this is what I need to do. How do I make this better? You can't do that without taking more time off. Yeah. There's consequences to everything you do. So like working five to six days as a tattooer, you're a workhorse, you're a hustler and that's awesome. Do it, make your money to get to the, to afford or do things that you need to do, goals set in mind, but at some point you have to like pause. But I pause. think one thing tattooers are guilty of is we get the money and we spend it. Oh, yeah. The family man or not, I like to, I mean, I am more frugal now. Before though. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, especially like both of you and I, and Kim knows, especially with you, like we started from nothing. And so it's like the hard work paid off. Look at what we got now when we had nothing. Like- and so then you're like, oh my gosh, I I made something of myself. You get excited and you want to spend the money. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you spend all of your money. This is true. And you have nothing left. <laughs> did you really make that much money? Yeah, this is true. I know I watched. Clip. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Exactly. If you make, somebody told me this in the past and you make 10 grand a week, right? And a week and you spend 10 grand. How much money did you make? Nothing. Yeah. These things that we get obsessed with materialistic things, it's just no good. It's nothing. Like I remember, uh, what's it? When I was apprenticing, Clint would take me, I, as an apprentice, I had to be with Clint all the time. So Clint would like, we shut the shop down. He's like, all right, come on, get in the truck. And I'm like, where are we going? He's like, we're going to the strip club. Mm. Cause Clint basically lived there. He was there all the time. Cause he was making hand over fist. And I was like, Hey, that sound went away. It's still there. It's just very, I don't, it's, oh, it went away hear, a lot. I don't hear it's, it. Well, it's lower. It's got to be something. Anyways, keep going. Clint. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hand over fist. And then it, to the point where he was spending so much money that people were getting delayed their paychecks at times. He was like, sorry, man, I spent so much money. I'm like, I'm an apprentice, so I don't have a say. And what do you just, mean paychecks? He, I mean, he was doing a percentage, so he would write them a paycheck uh, at the end of the week. Mm. And sometimes he had spent too much money at the titty bar. And... Like he would have to tell Jeremy or Cody and be mm -hmm. like, "Hey man, uh, it's I'll get you your paycheck tomorrow. I don't have it right now." I'm like, "What? Whoa!" And, oh, no. and they would have some words with them, be like, "Hey man, like what the hell? That's my money. We don't care if you spend yours." But now, Clint, you're talking about Clinton Cummings, yeah. right? And yeah. then he you, that's how you cancer. got started, right? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but yeah. Yeah, he passed away from cancer. We had a falling out, but I mean, I owe that guy my whole life. Why did you have a falling out? I'm so tired of hearing fucking tattooers say that. Uh, well, Clint reacted on his emotions. Like when he was good, he was awesome. When he was mad, everybody felt it. And one day he came back and, uh, Curtis had told, had told him that I had like basically disrespected him and a customer. And it wasn't, that wasn't it. We had a guy who was an older school tattooer who didn't know Photoshop. And I was on the computer helping him out. Yeah. I was like, I'll get to you when I, give me a second. I got to help him out. And he told Clint that I told him to fuck off. And so Clint walked in or he had called everybody and said, after the sh shop closes, stay there. I'm coming there. So we all waited for like an hour and a half for him to come back. He had the, he was pissed off from the airline, like making him uh, wait an extra like three hours or something. He was just angry. So he shows up and the first thing he does, start talking to me sideways. And he's like, Peck Clint? Yeah. In front oh, of everybody. Shit. 
and I was on probation. Cody and his parents had helped me have a place to live because as an apprentice, I gave up everything. Mm -hmm. I walked away from my girlfriend at the time because she was like, it's me or, or apprenticing. And I was like, this is, I'm, nothing's going to stop me from tattooing. And uh, so I did that. Uh, long story short, Clint talked to me in a way that I was, it was like, I could fight him and go to jail or I could walk away. So I walked away. You guys, and don't come at me with you Texans, okay? <laughs> you guys in Texas are very like, like that. Like, but there's, I mean, no, I don't think it's, maybe it is a Texas thing. You're more We're like, headstrong. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have those out here too. Trust me. Like I've seen some gnarly stuff going on in shops. But I mean, I love and respect Clint even after his passing. Like even, even with the fallout, like I, people would ask me and I yeah, would never sucks, say man. anything bad about him. I'm like, Hey you man, should never. I was like, that dude gave me everything and he made me work my ass off. How did you meet pressure. Clint? Uh, through Cody, my friend, Cody Dresser. He's a great tattooer. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of my best friends. And, uh, he had went through a tough old school apprenticeship. And so he knew, and I was like, hey, man, I really want a tattoo. Um, and he was like, let me talk to Clint. And Clint was like, uh, cause he's old school way. He didn't give a shit to entertain it. You couldn't just walk in the shop and ask. Yeah. And, uh, but Clint was nice enough cause he liked Cody. He goes, well, you vouch for him. Cody did. And he was like, tell him to come to the shop. And that was it. And so I came to the shop and then he just talked to me. And he's like, man, I can't promise you nothing. How about you just hang out at the shop yep. and see if you get along with the guys? That's more the old school way approach, I guess, in to how you get into tattooing. Yeah, you like, they want to know if they like you as a person first. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, no. Like, how am I going to apprentice if we don't get along? What if I'm a shady person? Or what if I'm around people who are shady? Well, see, that's where I took the, took the reams as far as, especially an apprentice. I don't give you the courtesy like to be on top of anything. You're under my thumb. And if you can't handle that, then you're not meant to be here. But that's where I substitute doing it like that, where come around and hang out. I'm a very private person. I don't like people being around me when I'm tattooing. Oh, that's true. If it's the client's friends or family that they come with them, that's totally fine. Um, or other artists that work with me or their clients checking it out. I have no problem with that. But when someone that doesn't, isn't a tattooer and you're like trying to get into the shop type of thing without me knowing or like some weird, like that approach that Clint did with you, it doesn't work for me. I don't like it. It's just not for me. But um, my approach to it then is, okay, here's your entrance fee and this is what your life's going to be like. If you can't handle it, get out. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, your method I've seen and it works great. Uh, it's definitely still like, even though it's these more, I guess you would say modern times, but like you still have an old school approach of like, hey, uh, just because I do things this way doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Yeah. And uh, and people ask me, they're like, why do apprentices go through? Why are y'all so mean? I'm like, it's not about being mean. It's about I'm testing you to see how much you want this. Because if you want something, nothing in the world's going to stop you. So but see... Man, yeah, I guess we can come and kind of cross mean, but I'm not going to give you my lifetime worth of experience and knowledge for free. Yeah, and Clint, and said, Clint said to me, he's like, "You're, I'm giving you something I can never take back from you. If yeah. we have a fallout, you get you. I'm you walk giving away it with that. You. Yes. So you're going to earn it. You're going to earn it. 100%. And I earned 15 years of him. Yeah. In two and a half to three. Mm -hmm. Like. That's a huge sacrifice for him. I think Genesis is, me that. is has she's already hit two years, and look at what she's done in two years. She's actually like, she survived. She's. I mean, I'm proud of her in the sense that she's better than a lot of tattooers. I mean, probably tattooing a little, little bit longer than her, but it shows my method of discipline and no BS. It works, and yeah, it's I mean, you know what I mean. If you don't know how to shut up and listen and take your ego out, you'll never survive in this industry. Never, 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 never. Nope. Yeah, like, I mean, you got to believe in yourself, but if you can't balance your own self belief and sacrifice your ego, yeah, you're you're dead on the spot. You're gonna drown. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna survive. And I I hate to make it a repetitive discussion on the podcast, but I think it's good for you guys to see different perspectives of tattooers. That's why, like, when I interview people on this podcast, me and Kim have both talked. I want to interview creatives. Like not just tattooers, painters, 
makeup artists, uh, sculptors, actors, oh, yeah. comedians, everything. Because we, even though musicians, because even though we're all different mediums, we're all artists still at heart. And that's, yes. we're all the same in that. Like when we listen to a rap song or, or even a rock, any kind of music, and there's relatable songs in there where they're talking about the music industry and how, you know, I'm going to show you or put what pushes them. Whenever I listen to like a, a track, I, I take that hits me. I take that and I'm like, you know what? I'm taking it. But instead of music, I'm taking that and turn it, thinking of it like art, like tattooing, yeah, like painting, like a graffiti artist, whatever. Like I take that and we turn it into our form of how, how can we relate to this song or even that sculpture? How can that sculpture, you know, how can it inspire me to do my tattoos tomorrow? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's like a, like a kickstart to motivating your day. Uh, yeah. like, like on the way here, uh, like when I guest spot here, uh, and you, you show me so much different music and you're like, yo, check this track and I'll listen to it. And then I'm like, Oh, I'm about to rock today. I'm like, today is about to be awesome. Yeah. And that's what it's about, man. It's just, it's just about relating to each other as artists. So I want to talk to all kinds of people. I have some really cool people lined up, but I also don't want to make the podcast just about, cause I've seen like people go on to their YouTube channel or whatever. And they're like, Oh, you know, we got this big time hit and it's cool to get big names on it and stuff. But I want to talk real stuff with people that I know for real. Do I have some people coming on the show um, that are bigger known? Sure. But I don't treat them any better or more hype than a, a friend like you or something. But I want to make this more like a personal thing. Like these are my friends. These are people that I grew into the industry with. Um, even though I haven't known you for a vast majority of my career, you still became, we became friends on the spot. You know, I met you at um, depiction Yeah, and you were there for a while and that's where we first met. And I didn't know a damn, I don't know who the fuck you were, Yeah, but it just worked. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like, like, oh, it's like one of those things, like when you meet someone, like when I met Kim, like I knew I loved her the second that I laid eyes on her. I just knew it. It, But there was times before Kim where I dated girls or something, or I met friends, people, you don't click with them. Or you know that there's something they're restricting that you're not yeah. going to get to the next level. I didn't feel that with you. You and me completely opposite to an extent. Like we're similar in ways. Like family values, I think we're very similar. I think people look at you and they think a troublemaker. You I mean, are I used to be one. You are sure. sob sometimes, but I was the same way. But I'll tell you right now, the way I look at it like this, and it's not to say that you're leading your life wrong. You do what the fuck you want to do, be free spirit. But if the day you were to have kids and you were to find someone to, oh, yeah, like a, if you were to find your Kim, change me. Yeah, it would because yeah. it's changed me from when ten. 10, you know, Ben from 15 years ago, bro, I was ready to fight people. I was ready to just, I was a very aggressive person. Yeah. I still can, you know, there's things, if you push my buttons, anybody, it's human nature, you're going to get there. But Kim can tell you all day, I've changed a lot. Oh yeah. You definitely, you, you walk, you're what I consider the old school term. You're meek. Like you're Mill? Chill, no meek. Meek mill. <laughs> no uh but no you're meek like uh you walk with kindness and stuff but don't take like don't take your kindness for weakness like no. if you if you step on the wrong person's toes god forbid kim's i mean it's death on sight like yo that's that's your queen bee that's your everything and stuff like that yeah if you mess with kim it's game over yeah, like i it don't should be that's how it should i've be. worked at a sh and then you know one thing that i told you before we did the podcast don't give clout to those who don't deserve it. You know, we don't, we try not to be negative, but we'll be real. Yeah. I worked at a shop where somebody brought up Kim and I remember, bro, that was the closest I ever got to Just handle really getting business. physical with yeah. someone because don't talk about my family. She's everything to me. On top of that, you talk about my kids. Oh, it's so, it's one of those things I try and stay away from because I don't want that old Ben to come out. It's not, violence is not the way. It's no, really no. not. You know, but ta the tattoo industry can, it can be like anything else in life. It can turn you like that. And it just, oh yeah, definitely. You, you'll snap. And it's just, I'm not here for that no more. I never was, but I think I was more defensive with them. I still am, but now I'm more like, I have more perspective. I'm like, I just want a tattoo, man. I want a tattoo and go home. Yeah. Like I used to be, I mean, like, you know, you know, my past, I used to be a real bad person. I was 
like highway to prison. I was doing all kinds of stuff, uh, just hating the world. And that's why, like, I love tattooing so much. That's why the side of my neck is a tattoo machine. Um, and it's got a banner that says my savior. Cause tattoo don't, you ha don't you have a tattoo machine on your head too? Mm -hmm. I have a tattoo machine on my head right here. And then, uh, a real big piece on my lower leg, uh, done by my really good friend. Abel, and what does it say? Abel Sanchez. What does it say on you? Uh, on the side of my neck, it says my savior with a tattoo machine. Cause it saved my life. I would have been in prison if, if I hadn't gotten into tattooing. I wouldn't know. I mean, obviously without Kim, I wouldn't be tattooing, but just in terms of tattooing, I don't even know what we'd be doing. I'd I'd for sure be a starving artist or something like. And I trust me, we starved quite a bit when we started. It wasn't easy, but oh yeah, I mean, tattooing saved my life for sure. I saw somebody wearing a shirt that says "Tattooing saved my life." That comes from an old graffiti scene. I that I guarantee that dude is a graffiti artist or he knows about it. Or there was a shirt that said "Graffiti saved my life." Yeah, I don't know. That's what's that doesn't on, make any that's sense. That's on to the me. bio of my Instagram. It says tattooing. Saved it does my life. actually. It does make sense because back in the day, it was one of those things. Like when I did graffiti, it was. I think it's even been in movies where people say like you're either an artist or you're a drug dealer, you're a gangster, or you're a drug or you know artist. You got to choose one. You got to choose a path. Yeah, you're doing something. So art for me did save my life, and it's a positive creative outlet. But more so for me, Kim put me in that. She threw me back in there. And that's where I think that I've, I've got too much to lose now. Where back then I was like, shit, let's do it. Yeah. Now I was like, no, but don't test me. But that it's is, like, but it's that's one of those the, things. That's the great thing about starting tattooing young. Like it's, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So use that motivation to be like, yo, I'm going in working. I'm staying till like when I tattooed at street shops, we're tattooing until two in the morning. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you didn't let shit walk out the door. It was no... Oh, hey, I'm not going to do that. Yo, I have, I'm, I'm here now. I'm trying to get to here. And then I already see myself getting to here. And the only way to that is just pure stubborn motivation. And see, but that's a different hustle though. Like working at a street shop for till two in the morning, I've done it. That is a different hustle. And don't get it fucking twisted. And people coming at me like, well, you know, you're realism guys. Listen, well, it's true. That's a long, unspoken argument that somebody down a lot of, of a lot of traditional media. cats don't like the new way of things. Which that's your opinion, and I respect that. That's fine. And I've heard but that listen, from the realism guys but, too. Yeah. So most re more recently, easy, not like, no, no way. And half of these guys that do realism can't do anything smooth to save their life, but. It's not to talk shit nothing. We shouldn't be talking. We're all on the same team. Exactly. So why do we keep going into this, I'm better than you. Oh, you guys suck. Bro, you're an artist too. Now, if you're in this for the money only, that's different. You shouldn't even be talking. Just go sit down in your station, tattoo what you can, and go home. Mm -hmm. If you're not trying to change it. But see, what I'm trying to say is different hustle. Work until 2 in the morning at a street shop. It's just, let's be real. It's trying to make that money. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Some artists... At that, you know, with that mentality at a street shop, they just want to make that money, but they're also trying to improve their craft. And there's a big difference between someone working till two in the morning at a private studio like myself. I did it for years and yeah. I still not till two in the morning anymore, but I work till like light. 10, 11 sometimes. Yeah. Not even that, huh? Well, I mean, I've seen you do that. Work no, till 11. You, you do. No, it just the, the latest I work is 10. Now, but I'm saying no, when I first met the latest you. I have worked is like 10. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is before I would work till like two, three in the morning, you know, me and me and Nick used to stay at the shop till like three in the morning, yeah. sometimes tattooing. And I would start at like 12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but what I'm trying to say is with that, I'm, I was always trying to level up and change the game. And was I really change anything? No, I don't think so. But for me personally, I was, that is a different hustle than someone who is, tattoo until two in the morning to fucking you know to make 10 20 tattoos versus me doing one tattoo but i'm trying to change my portfolio i'm trying to level up yeah you can't become and i'm not saying i'm extraordinary don't get it twisted but i did want to become that and i do still want to become that i want to become undeniable i want people to say Shh, that's a ben piece right there i know it and it's not an ego thing it's 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 just hard work. I, when I leave That's the tattoo industry, late. and I still got a lot to go, but when I leave, I want to leave and people remember my name. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? To where people know, oh, shit, that guy was this dude. And it's not because of a fame, fame, because I tell people this too. Fame is just a word. And the reason I say that is because the second you stop posting, nobody cares about you. So That's was there really ever fame? No. No, it you wasn't. had a hype. You had, you had a social it media hype. It was hype, yeah. Social media hype. Because what if that app dies tomorrow? But And, and they, most of them will. Yeah, but like as far as like the, the 2 a.m. grind and stuff like that, I don't believe that, or I it, I don't think everybody has to do it, but it builds a level of strength. Like, so when wintertime comes, you're not scared. You know you can hustle. Yeah. Like, you're like, all right, come on, bring on the cold winter. I can get through it. I know I got this. Like, those people ain't scared. And as far as, like, people hating on different styles, like, if you need to belittle that person to make your style feel stronger so that you can feel taller, I mean, that just shows your own weakness. You've already like, lost that battle. Like, I, that's what Clint taught me the, for the first uh, five years of tattooing. He told me, you should know how to do everything to some degree so that you're well-rounded. And yeah. then apply, hey, solid line work from traditional to this new style you want to do. How to exaggerate features if you like new school on this stuff. Like uh, Japanese is knowing how to lay out on skin. Realism is knowing values and stuff like that and real depth. I mean- all these tattooers nowadays want to like fight and bicker with each other. But like Clint, what the, all the great things I learned from Clint was like, he would tell me stories about back in like late nineties and early two thousands after the tattoo shops would close, the tattoo shops would meet up with each other at a bar or something and talk about stuff. Like there was no beef. There was like just, Hey, we all like tattooing. We can all be friends. But now it's, it's now I feel like there's more beef with, within tattooers, which it's really like, it sucks. It's not discouraging me because I don't. I don't associate with that energy. I will not. Like yeah, you know, you, I just yeah. won't do it. I don't have time for it. But for what though? Everybody, I, I feel like tattooers now are talking like there is a, a, a ration on clients, bro. There's so many people out there to tattoo. Nobody's fighting over anybody. So and it's just like I see it all the time. Oh, that's you know that's no good. This is that. This is not like bro. We're all in the same boat. You know what I mean? We really are. You know, like you just said it right now. The winter, the slow season, all that. Bro, save your money. Yeah. Throughout the year, save your money. You'll be fine. Yeah, but like how Kim was saying, when you make all this money and you spent it, what did you make? If if you save it and prepare for the winter, you could sleep through it if you want to. Yeah. Because one thing I did notice this year has been really slow. Oh, yeah. Not necessarily... Again, not not for me because I have my stuff sorted out in a certain way. We had some cancellations, but I'm at the point in my career now where I just take the day off, man. And I'm excited to take that day off because I am exhausted. But the thing is, is the slow season is really scary. I remember that that fear. Of, oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to pay my bills. I don't oh, know yeah. what's going to happen. For whatever reason, this year seemed a lot worse than normal. I don't know if it's like an election because it's an election year or I mean, what the economy, deal is. Economy goes up and down. We yeah. can't control it. All we can no, control no, no. is how hard we work. You get what you put in. But that's the whole thing. If you don't bust your butt throughout the year or whatever, or set yourself up like okay, this is what I can do. This is how much I can spend. This is how much I'm making. You really have to set things up. It's not just like I talked about it. And my buddy John Nelson. We're not just pirates anymore. That that can't exist anymore if you want a future you want to buy a house you want that car you want the whatever whatever you have to plan things out you know what i mean so with the artists that work with me here i just here's your booth rent leave me alone and i just ask them to bust their butt when they get in here try their best i want you to level up every time and every once in a while i critique them i've yeah. given you critiques oh yeah i like i said with get rid like your ego should leave should stop. Should start and stop at your house. When you walk out your front door, leave it there and go to the shop. And like I've come to you and been like, "Hey, I did this tattoo and I thought it was amazing, but I knew I could still grow." I'm like, "Hey, can you rip this apart for me?" And you, you don't hold, you don't hold back your punches. You're like, Are "There's you ready? no point." You're like, "Are you ready for this? Because I'm gonna hurt your feelings." And I'm like, "Yeah, get it. Hey, this, 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 this." But it's constructive. Like I can build from that. But I've had people on Instagram hit me up for critiques and that's exactly what I say to them. Are you ready? No, I'll talk to them first. And I'll say, yeah, totally. I can give you a critique if you want. Like, well, how much you charge? I don't know. Come on. I'm not going to charge you for that, man. I'm, I'm here to help. 
You know what I mean? So I, I want to talk about this, this, and this piece. And I said, okay, just know I don't sugarcoat things. Are you ready? Yeah. And then they're like, yeah. I was like, are you sure? And I have had some people say either not respond, like <laughs> they don't want to hear it. And some people say, no, I'm good. Thank you for your time. I'm not trying to be mean. No, no, But you don't grow as an artist unless you're honestly critiqued and said, hey, you need to work on this. And for anybody who hears this, like, Ben's this way with everybody. Like, we're with very, my kids. We're very close friends. With my and wife. You'll be the exact same way with me as somebody <laughs> so, who hits you up that day. So Kim it's has this thing. It's not an attack. Let me, let's talk about this real quick. Kim has this thing that whenever it's art-based, she's like, oh, are you judging me? I'm not judging you. <laughs> and I don't. Am I critiquing it in my head? But yeah, anyways, and uh, <laughs> no, anything she does is great. And but if she was to ever ask me, like, hey, what do you think? I'm gonna say, you ready? Yeah, I think though that's because we have very like open and honest communication when it comes to that. Because if I ask you, like, no, seriously, tell me the truth. Then I expect him to actually tell me the truth. I'll Even tell if her it's going to hurt my feelings. And I mean, I do the same thing for you as well. Like sometimes you need to hear the truth. I don't oh, ask yeah. her for critiques. And it's not. <laughs> that man. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. On things, though, like, on, some, on some things I do, but not yeah. when it comes to like tattooing and no, stuff. No, no, no. Not she leaves that, that to just me. Just in life in general. Like you want an honest answer. You don't want somebody who's going to constantly. Oh yeah, well, y'all, you're great. You're you're doing amazing. Like no, sometimes y'all both you're not. compliment each other with that because y'all both like y'all don't get in your feels over nope. criticism. No. You're like, all right, cool. I have that. I have, can process that now. How do I use this to my benefit? I feel like that's yeah. a big thing with today's world too. Is everybody gets in their feelings? Look, bro. So, so when I tell Genesis something along with tattooing, or I tell my kids something, it's and I, and I tell them it's not to hurt, to hurt your feelings. Don't take it personal. I'm trying, just trying to help you improve. Well, like the way I see it, like if I say something to somebody and I've had people be like, man, you probably should have worded that nicer. At the end of the day, I go, you're an adult. You process your emotions how you want to. It's not my job to have a set game plan to, to how I say things to every single person. Like if I'm brash, cool. Like just read the, read the energy in the room, read the situation, read the wording. Like if they say, if somebody says to you something with bass in their voice, yeah, it's probably meant to be derogatory. Yeah. But if they just, if it comes off strong, but they're talking to you with a nice, calm tone of voice, there's nothing to be offended about. But if you choose to be offended, that's your own fault. That's your own insecurity or problem. Like, that yeah, it's not to that person's me. fault. Well, I think that also comes back to like, if you know the person, you know, they don't have bad intent. It's not yes. like they're out to like put you down, make you feel bad about no, yourself. No, no, no. Like, Yes. They're mm-hmm. trying to help you. And some people can't handle that. Yeah. Cause I mean, Ben has straight before been like, yo man, you're the way you're doing things. I don't agree with that. Like that's a solid friend. Like they're going to tell you shit that you don't want to hear. Hey, I don't like the path you're going down and I care about you. And I want to bring it to your attention. But also if I'm honest with you or if I make it clear that I know something's going on. Yeah. As a friend in return, you shouldn't let that affect you in a negative way. No, you it, shouldn't. it benefited me. Yeah, it just, I don't, it sounds messed up, bro. But I don't have time for that stuff. I don't have time for it. No, you actually, uh, it woke me up. I was like, oh shit, I'm, I'm already in the box. You're outside the box looking in. You're seeing shit that I don't see in myself. Like if I was being self-destructive or hey, possibly going towards that path of being self-destructive and you caught it in firsthand. Hey man, I see you doing something that's not, that, hey, this isn't healthy for you. And I could have been like, well, fine, fuck that. You don't like the way I'm living, blah, blah. And they, to me, be a pussy about it. No. You have like a baby sometimes. You get oh, all quiet and you run to your corner. Everybody everybody has got their ups and downs. I mean, I'm not perfect. But like at that time, the way I handled it, I was like, it was a culture shock. I was like, fuck. Am I disappointing like somebody well, I hold in high regard? You you keep, you you end up getting, I think as tattooers, we get sometimes, we get stuck in this this notion of, Okay, we're doing good right now. Let's just keep doing this. But the truth of it is we got to try to keep evolving it and then making it better. And sometimes even for me, it's hard, man. It's like, how do I take this to the next level? How do I do this? But within saying everything that we're saying, you also got to keep things professional too as a tattooer. Yes. You can't be this POS. And, and I am very like keen on like 
my friends will be like, oh, did you see that chick? I'm like, no. Yeah. You ain't got time for that. Like, it, it, when I have my friend Nicole on here, she'll tell you a nice little little ditty story. Well, you're very- Not Puff Daddy. I don't- <laughs> Don't come after me, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, story. Like, you're, yeah, you're very, very professional. disciplined. I yes. am very- And, you know, like, as yes. much like as- Like a blueprint. I think that's what people, like, misread, too, is that, like, if he doesn't go out with you- or he doesn't want to hang out or whatever. It's just him like snubbing or no, not at or all. anything He's like awesome. that. It's not that at all. It's that he has an idea of what he wants to do for that day. And he knows that he needs to do X, Y, and Z. And hanging out with you after a convention or whatever, going to the bar or going to dinner late is not going to, he's not going to be able to execute. It's X, just not y, for me. Z. You're too it's far not, in life to, to fucking diddy, diddy daddle with partying and shit. Honestly, bro, it, 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 it's... I think it's cool. I think to hang, people hanging out makes me seem people happy. It's awesome. And it's not, I'm not saying I'm better than you. Mario, but no, I'm not saying any of that because some people are going to take it that way. No, not It's just, all. this is my preference. Me and my dad don't get along. But I will tell you, man, as many bad things I went through with my dad, he also, I love him for one thing, the man, is he gave me discipline. He really did. It wasn't like an easy discipline and oh, it no. wasn't anything I'd ever put my kids through. But my kids know discipline as well. Like they know, like they they get a little pushy, sure. But when I put the, when we put the foot down, it's like, oh, sh mom's mad and dad's pissed or whatever, and they'll listen. But there's certain boundaries. But discipline is 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 a very big thing for me, and in the tattoo world, I've seen it instill in Genesis. She had no discipline when she came here. She thought it was gonna be. Billy Rockin, fucking. Well, that's Kat, most of these Kat, people that Kat come in. Von D in, boom, boom, boom. I'm cool. I'm gonna wear my cool sunglasses. Nope. Well, like looking out. You, you can, you can do that, but when you're here tattooing, that all goes out the window. Keep your head down and focus on making this the best tattoo that you can do. Nailed it. Well, everyone, that's, everyone lives their life. Write a that down. Certain way. <laughs> Everyone lives their life a certain way. It doesn't mean that you're going to be no. more or less successful. No, 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 no. But if you're in a place where you're feeling like you're not as successful and you want to be more successful, maybe there's areas in your life that you need to change and adjust to be able to accomplish those goals. Like I'll, I'll misquote this, but like Mike Tyson said, he's like, it doesn't matter how much, how hard you work or how much uh, talent you have. If you have no discipline, you have nothing. Yeah. Because discipline, discipline will win you everything, every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the guy who shows up and it, he might be doing less than you, but he's disciplined and he doesn't miss a step. He, uh, Like Monday comes, he doesn't make excuses for showing up to work. He shows up. Yeah. And yeah, you might have stayed till three in the morning trying to perfect your craft, but you sleep in the next day. That dude's showing up every day because his discipline does not shake. Just like yours. I learned that from you. Like, you're like, hey, why aren't you doing this? No excuses. Get it done. Have, like, hold yourself to discipline. And with that, you're going to get what you want. But di di discipline comes in different forms, too. Like, I used to have discipline and get up, work out, do something, and then do whatever, and then go to work. But now everything, my life has shifted quite a bit where my discipline just relies on more so just my design time. And I should take care of myself too and all that stuff, but it's hard. Like discipline sways. Yes. It doesn't stay the same, but as long as you have some kind of outline of, okay, this is what I got to do. This is what's going on, whatever, then stick with that. Because as tattooers, if you just lollygag and if you wait till the last minute, like we had an artist here and again, no names, just to keep that respect, like, and just to yeah, yeah. keep it clean. She wouldn't show up prepared. She wouldn't show, I mean, bro, they would be here to five, six hours or whatever, three, whatever many hours. Your client shouldn't be waiting for hours for you to get, you know, tattooing them. We have enabled and, and made it cool to be late, to made it, 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 it to not have regard of that person's time. Yeah, I don't understand you know, well, well, yeah, I'm paying you this, this or whatever, but. Oh, you're getting a tattoo for me, bro. It works both ways. We need to keep the respect from the client needs to keep respect for the artist and vice versa. I, if I ever show up late, it's maybe a couple minutes. And if something happens like on the freeway or something, then I'm like, Hey, something's going on the freeway. I'm going to be there this time. But I communicate with my clients or, 
you know, you just got to be respectful to your clients, man. I think that's a, that's a big thing for me. So, yeah, like I see that just comes off to me as a rock star, like showing up late. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not into that. Well, uh, you're getting this from me. Like, dude, at the end of the day, we're just people who do art on people's skin. You're, you're no better. You put your shoes on one foot at a time, just like your client does. They deserve the same respect as you want to get from them. I, I will say you can get lost in the sauce kind of thing. Oh, for sure. I, I, I've worked so much where I'm sober now. I'm so tired. I have so many things on my mind. Sometimes I'll forget things. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I, I'm like late or, or sometimes I'll be like, hey, I need to reschedule you because your design's not ready. That is, <clears throat> that's my form of leveling up. That's my form of, okay, now I'm here. How do I get to the next level? And if, where more of the time I'd be like, okay, cool. I design this. What do you think? I catch myself now designing something and scratching it completely and saying, yeah. no, we're restarting it. But yeah. that's what it takes. But yeah, but just like we were saying, I've never seen you show up or we like show up and then your client's waiting there for three hours where, oh, I didn't draw the night before. I'm drawing right now. No, nope. that doesn't happen. And I personally, like, if that's how you want to work and your clients like it, cool, do what you want to do. But me personally, I would feel like I'm rushed and I would feel like I would feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I don't like that. I like per setting myself up for success. And, uh, like I like knowing my design from the night before to the day of. So God forbid I wipe that stencil away. I already have it muscle memory in my mind. Mm -hmm. I already, I know what's going on that day. I already know what colors I'm going to pick out. I already made a palette, uh, set out. Well, that's why it's good to, to hand make your stencils. Yeah. I think it's cool to use the printers and all that stuff once time and whatever. But I know that there was times in my career where if I wasn't comfortable with a design, I'd hand make it just in case. But I that mean, mentality is disappearing. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's the instant generation. Yeah. Like at the, the shop we mentioned, that I used to work at, they actually were like, they thought it was funny. They didn't, they weren't mean about it, but they were like, dude, really? You've been tattooing three years and you're hand stenciling. That's all I did. I, because at Clint's shop, there wasn't a Thermofax. Yeah. Every single person that worked with him, you hand stenciled. And yeah. as his apprentice, I did his stencils for him. I was doing stencils of color portraits, and he had sat me down, and he'd be like, yep, that's wrong. Re-stencil it. Blah, blah, blah. Rip it that's up. That's good. Oh, yeah. He didn't give a shit about my feelings. Yeah. He's like, I he's like, I don't care about your feelings. I care about that client right there. That's who I care about. Yeah. And I was like, and he was like, and you better have the exact same thing. Like- mm -hmm. It's it's a gift, really. Like, they're letting you tattoo them. Yeah, we get paid well, and we get to do awesome things, but, like, you're putting something on somebody for the rest of their life. We need to, This isn't a game. Mm -hmm. You need to be, like, on your P's and Q's. Respect the flesh. Yes. You like, know. I hate... Um, I mean, you maybe you could edit this out. I hate the show Ink Master when they call them canvases. It's no, not a canvas. We wouldn't edit that out. Let's just be honest. Like, that's not a canvas. On a canvas, you can fuck up. You can throw it away. You got that's one shot. not a client. And I'm not saying anybody's perfect. That's but a client. That's a person. Yeah. You should try your best. Mistakes and do happen. We're not mm -hmm. robots. But even then, the mistake should be minuscule at best. Hey, and I can go back into that and I can fix. Well, like Aunt, my, my buddy, Andy Foe said it. And then, and then I kind of, it's something that was in my head always, but he inspired me to say it too. Stop treating your clients as a number. Stop treating your clients oh. as a paycheck. It's not, a, dude. It, That's a great way of putting it. If you're that. thinking it, just get out. Cause you don't care. Like, Oh, I'm this big known tattooer or you're a beginner, whatever. You need to respect the people that you, they're giving you a part, a part of their life, a part of their, part of their body forever. Even if they get lasered, it was still there. You were still there. So it, it tattooing is more intimate than people make it nowadays. Yeah. It's definitely an intimate transaction. Like, yeah, a lot of people know the artists that they're wanting to go to. And so they're coming to you for a specific reason. And so when you show up, and you don't live up to the expectation. Yes. Like that's sucky because that's on their body forever. Yeah. And they have to remember that oh, person I who had did a it. horrible experience or, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Like it doesn't, you could be the best tattooer in the world for real. You're number one, but if you're a dick or you're an asshole or you don't give a shit about your client, it's over. 
that client doesn't give a shit about you and nobody and none of us tattooers give a shit about you either. No. You like um like Jeff Ensminger is the reason I started tattooing. That's my favorite tattooer of all time. He did, he did my, your back? He did my whole back piece and he's gonna continue to tattoo me. What is it? Uh it's an inverted uh version of the famous painting of Michael Dark Angel stabbing the devil. It's like a super demon stabbing Michael the Archangel and shoving him into the, mm-hmm. into the pits of hell and stuff like How that. How many people have stopped watching, you think? Oh, probably. I mean, I'm it just is kidding. what it is. But like, no, that's the whole thing with art. It should, it should was, be edgy. Like, it should like, be disturbing. Well, it's like you're scared. They always say, don't meet your heroes. And I was scared to meet him because I looked up sure. to this guy. And what if he sucks? But, dude, he's the nicest guy in the world. The nicest guy. And he has zero ego. And God forbid he's so cheap. And I was like... I was like, uh, how much he was like at the time. I don't know what his rates are now, but he was like a thousand dollars a day. I was like, what? You're gonna tattoo my back for a thousand dollars a day? How much money can I get? I you? think it's it's He's something the nicest to be, guy. It's something to be said though to you. Like, I think um it's crazy. I've had one client that I know for sure has asked me to finish or cover up a piece that someone did. And I'm like, who did that? And then it's just a person who's been tattooing for two or three years and did an awesome piece, but because they lack the fundamentals, the tattoo starts falling apart, starts to blur, starts to fall out, starts to lighten up too much. It's just, you have to still go through the process of learning the stuff. It yeah. doesn't matter who you are. I don't care who you are. fundamentals are there for a reason. But then I hear that they're charging like 3600 oh and I'm God. like, I don't even charge anywhere close to that. What are you talking about? And it's just very like, I don't want to say it's discouraging, but what it is, it's disturbing because... It's just crazy that we have become that now where there's people that have barely an ounce of experience compared to someone who's been tattooing for 10, 15 years, 20 years, and they're charging way more than them. And at the hustler part of me is like, fuck it, man, get, get your money, you know, but we have to have some kind of integrity with tattooing as well. And I think that part is definitely disappearing. Well, like we've talked about it and you had a great way of putting it. You're like, eventually that candle's going to burn out. It will. Like, like you can. You only, hit the ceiling too soon. You can only take rob so many people's wallets to 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 feed your ego. Eventually, people are gonna be like, "Man, th- like I'm getting robbed." Like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a game of balance, and I think tattooers need to constantly remind themselves to keep that balance. Otherwise, you're you'll be really slow during the winter, or things will just start to fall apart. You know, and it's just one of those things. Like I, we can't control anybody. Everybody's gonna do what they want to do. But it is what it is, you know? Like, remember that... Just remember humble beginnings. Like, nobody was born making a, th- a $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 a day tattooing. Like, these people work possibly work nine to five jobs, maybe make $500 a week. How long did they save up just to get this tattoo from you? Yeah. Like, don't make well, it... Oh, yeah, big time. Like, don't make it impossible. Like, I personally don't want to make it impossible to get tattooed by me. I want to tattoo more people. Yeah. I want to have, and like, like, like I learned from you, like if I'm charging you for a full day, I'm going to, I'm going to give you an experience. I like, I learned all this from Ben, like, uh, one, have great conversation, and engage with your clients, buy them food, get them drinks, stuff like that. Like give them aftercare and stuff like that. Don't charge for it. You already charged them no. for the day. Like take care of them. Yeah. When my clients come in, for those who don't know, if, if you haven't done that too, you don't know. Unless your friend that got tattooed on me told you. When they come in, I make sure that they they ate before they came in uh, around three, four hours into the tattoo. I, I We buy lunch or f- dinner, whatever the case may be. And I make sure the clients are fed. They want coffee or anything in between. I make sure the clients are taken care of. And then when they leave, I also make sure they have aftercare. They have everything they need to take care of their work. I don't understand how people don't do that. I'm not saying you listen, if you got to buy a dollar menu stuff, then go buy three little burritos and Del Taco or whatever. You don't have to do, in, you know, what Outback Steakhouse and Porto's every day. It doesn't have to be extravagant. <laughs> no, yeah. but you need to take care of your It just clients. shows that you care, that you're a genuine person. That's what people want. Like uh, going back to Clint, like, I mean, I'm going to bring him up. I've learned so much from that dude. But he told me, he was like, uh, he showed me one time, uh, he was like, have you ever seen, have you ever noticed this? He's like, and you, uh, somebody would be like, hey, what do you think about this tattoo? And you're like, man, in a nice way, that needs to be touched up, it needs to be fixed, and they will defend that tattoo, that horrible scratcher tattoo w- with their life, 
because that person treated them with respect. They don't care about the tattoo. They care about how you treat them. Yeah. Like, yeah, they got a tattoo, but you are the, the start and the finish of that whole interaction. People just want to be treated with respect and know that you care about their time, their money. Like yeah, you for value sure. them. Mm-hmm. If you can put that, you're going to, those are the customers that are going to return. Those are the customers that are going to bring always, you customers. Always return. So if you're struggling, oh, I don't know why the customer didn't come back or I'm, I'm hungry. Maybe reflect on yourself and ask, how can I treat this? What have I been fashion? doing? Because there's people that. What haven't I been doing? There's people that like they have that fake humbleness. You know what I mean? But they treat their clientele or inquiries like crap. And it's like, bro, maybe you're busy because you're doing things wrong. Maybe self-reflect a little bit and understand maybe it's me. Maybe I'm doing. And there's been times I've had to do that. And because we get so busy, sometimes it's easy to dismiss someone or people very, I'm very short to the point a lot of times because I know that maybe this this email is not going anywhere. Like the client just wants a hookup, and I can tell. But I try and give everybody a fair chance. My assistant is really good at that, and she takes care of that. But that's why I stay out of it. But I don't know, man. It's just one of those things like this is like it's never going to change. So let's talk about your style of tattooing. Why do you tattoo anime stuff? Because that's literally my favorite thing. I mean, but, that's okay. what I grew up. Let's, that's what I grew up did watching Did you really, though? No, for real. Dragon Ball Z You was grew up like, watching anime. Dragon Ball Z was what I watched. That I mean, Pokemon, obviously. I was, in, I was born in 88, so, like, uh, Pokemon was my thing. Digimon, Power Rangers. Just, I mean, I guess pop culture stuff. Um, I mean, uh, that's my favorite thing to tattoo. But, I mean, that's not where you start off. Like, anime is not easy to tattoo. It's very difficult. It's uh, difficult in the sense, like, Disney, you got to make sure it looks at like the character. That and your color saturation. So, like, the when you do super hyper-realistic, and I've, it's cause I've been there, you got to be careful because you can make that Zoro or Luffy or Goku, you can start to make it look like it's not them. Yes. And if it doesn't hit you, like, when you watch the show, and people don't care about it. Yeah. And it can be the coolest realistic Dragon Ball piece. And I've seen some really badass ones. They're super cool. It doesn't hit you the same. It's yeah. not like, because uh, I used to do it. And people, I got a lot of heat for it. Like, oh, man, why didn't you just do it like the anime? Well, because I don't want to tattoo like the million other anime tattooers. Yeah, it's not just copy and paste. Well, that's why I just use my color now. Like, I use my own custom color palettes to try and change things. Sometimes if I'm doing a character, I'll use like five or six different images to do that character. Oh, but yeah. what, what, like, for you, like, what keeps you pumped? Like, what keeps you going on the anime stuff? Uh, I mean, I find new ways for it to challenge me. Because, like you said, like, it's not just copy and paste. Like, uh, I want to change the light source or make, like, if he's doing a Kamehameha, how do I make that shine on his face? How do I make it hit here or here or on his hair and then not lose transition of that? But how do you practice that? Uh, I really, I mean, I find inspiration from people like you or uh, other really, really amazing tattooers. Uh, I look at that and I'm like, how did they do that? I used to take it to the point where I'd buy these little LED balls. Like they're like little plastic balls that light up. And I would put it in the Dragon Ball. I like tape it onto their hand. I would do that to get an accurate representation of how is this light going to hit that. And once I do it once, you remember it and you do it. When you change it up, you got to do it again, but it's always good to get little lights and figures yeah. and just see how the light interacts, get that interaction, how the shadows are created and put it into the anime cell. I remember watching, I just saw like a little snippet of Paul Booth saying how he could do light sources. You just draw a circle and then point arrows in the directions where that light's hitting. And that's the way I do it. That's an art school thing, man. Like I, I've been yeah, doing I that since I was in high school. Yeah, I, never I didn't go to art school either. I mean, I went... Throughout all high school, I took art, and my teacher taught me the old little circle with the lights, like it's shining. Yeah. And focus on that, and it'll help you with your light source for sure, with like, tattooing. I just, uh, I mean, I've learned a lot of stuff just uh, art-wise, just really from people I'm friends with the tattooing. Like my friend Evan Qualls, he's an amazing tattooer. Owns a shop out in Tennessee, uh, and he taught me the thumbnail trick. He's like, hey, I was drawing this big piece, and I was like, man, it's just not laying out in this area, right? And he's like, Dude, you're trying to draw something on this scale. He's like, why don't you just draw a little thumbnail if, and see if you could fit it there. And then if you do that, and then he's like, then expand it. And I started doing that, and it helped me tremendously. 
and stuff. Mm. Or I would get tattooed. Like, whenever you tattooed my leg, I watched you tattoo, and I was like, oh, so that's... Like, it wasn't like, oh, that's how he does it. It's easy. It's just like, oh, I never thought about approaching it that way. Sure. Like, I've seen you draw these amazing lines with a with a nine mag, and I'm like, oh, wow. Right. How do you do that? I was like, I'm a traditional guy. Give me a fat, uh, loose nine and pull it one shot. It's just a different approach. That's all it is. But it's it's something, uh, like, I like being well-rounded. That's something I never tried, and it expanded my artistic appeal. Like, yeah. Oh, you're 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 lining with a brush instead of a pen. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's huge. One hundred percent. And uh, I mean, that's why, like, I feel like um, when people are like, I've had people message me they're like, "How how did you do that?" I was like, "Get watercolor paper and watercolor. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to watercolor, you're not going to understand tattooing. They go hand in hand." I don't see. I don't agree with that. Yeah, but you could. You. I mean, you're. I can't. Paintings. I hated watercolor, man. It yeah. just doesn't work for me, man. I don't. It it, was you know why? Because watercolor, it, you have to learn how to control that. Oh, yeah. Where is shading. All I mean, you stuff. have to do the same thing with any medium of art. But learning how to control watercolor, that's you're, you're trying to like bend water. And I, I figured it out. I know how to do it. Am I good at it? Not really. Not, not like a traditional guy. But in the reverse aspect, not a lot of traditional guys can oil paint. And I can... Oh, oil yeah. paint all day. Yeah. That's so it's true. just as insane as learn how to control that medium. I just never wanted to learn yeah, how to I feel control like people it. People just find the medium that they like and they get comfortable. And then, they, I mean, you just kind of run with it. Like, I mean, there's tattooers like you that can, like, you can draw, you can sketch, you got graffiti painting down, you got oil painting down. You're very well rounded. Like, yeah. Like, I, I would say I am. Yeah. Like me personally, I'm like, uh, my buddy Cody was like, he would just, we lived together and he was watercoloring these big, amazing paintings. And I was like, dude, I want to do that. And he was so good at it. He made it look easy. And I remember the first time I got pissed and I'm throwing, I'm cussing. He's like, dude, what's wrong? I was like, I can't get this done. He's like, dude, it's not easy to learn. He's yeah. like, you're going to, you're going to fall plenty of times. No matter what. Yeah. He's like, don't give up. Just keep doing it. Yeah. And that kind of transitions to tattooing. You're not going to be doing amazing color portraits out the gate. Mm -hmm. You're no. gonna, you need to start small. And if you do, it's going to fall apart most likely because, again, f lacking fundamentals is a, it's a huge thing in our industry. And, and I'm sure a lot of other industries, but you have to like, you can't leap because let's say you get to the top, you get to the top of that mountain. What are you going to hold on to? You got no fundamentals. You got no foundation. You're going to fall. And I've seen it so many times happening like to people, you know, like me personally, like. I could be wrong about this and I probably am. Uh, but like me, I'm like, I'll see someone's amazing tattoo work. And I'm, I'm like, that looks amazing. But where's the black at? Is this going to last? Yeah. So man, I know, I know artists, buddies of mine that do that. And then there's no black in it. it looks great. But it's not going to last. Well, I just know that I, cause I, I've done that style where, I don't put any black in it and it looks so soft and pastel and it looks awesome. And it's not degrading. Get the fuck out of here. It's like a bug. <laughs> it's not degrading the artist at all. Or that's not, I'm not degrading. It's not like talking down that style because I did it. But I've also noticed that when those tattoos heal in a, in a couple years, they start to go away and the client's not happy. I've fixed things that I've done in the past like that. Black and or not even. Yeah, I mean, say black and dark tones are necessary in everything you do with tattooing. It's not something that you can easily be like, boom, okay, this is done. Like, you need to, I'm, I'm going to do the pastel thing. I think it's cool. I think it's beautiful. So I've seen beautiful tattoos, bro. But the truth is, maybe on certain skins it works. For most skins, it doesn't. It's just the, it's the truth, man. Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, you know me. I'm a very big stickler about, learning the history of anything you do. So if you would, if these, if you do that, I always see them like, maybe they don't know the history of tattooing because black, if you learn the history of tattooing, you'll learn that black is, is ink. It's, and everything else, your colors are not ink. That's pigment. So, and black is made of carbon. Your everything in existence is made of carbon. So your body doesn't break that down. What breaks down your tattoos is your own immune system. Yeah. So, it's easy. Here for we your go. Body. Bill Nye, the science guy, <laughs> just showed up. I mean, 
it's easier for your body to break down those lighter pigments because they're not as strong. So your tattoo needs a foundation. Black is your 100%, foundation. 100%. I like agree those darker that. pigments have a he- have a heavier pigment now, concentration. So there is a big thing with tattooing, in, in my opinion, in my experiences and talking to other artists as well throughout my career. If you put white too much everywhere in a tattoo, it makes it fall flat. It gets kind of like that chalky because so much white, it makes it pale almost. Yes. Now, it's the same thing with black. If you put black where it doesn't need to go, it just falls flat. Now, if you put black where it only needs to go, it makes it more rich and vibrant. So there's a big there's a big gap in understanding where do I use the black? Well, if it looks black, and put black in it because over time, that's going to last be be like more than you put in like green and red to make a darker color yes when it heals it's gonna heal a lot lighter trust me you ever heard the thing where it's like your lights heal darker and darker heal light that is the truth in tattooing and you need to learn how to balance that yeah definitely that is a big thing like i've seen like you were saying i've seen a lot of people they it's like they deny black and they just use complementary colors to make darker tones and it's like, yeah, that works because, like, you definitely don't want to add black to yellow because then you just get this dingy green. Like, you, you want that yellow. No, it's no good. Yeah, it's yeah. no good. But if if black's in there, do it. Yeah. Use it. Like, it's there for a reason. You yep. need those, those like, uh, we were talking about it a few days ago. Uh, like, yeah, you made this great color tattoo or design but flip it into black and gray and see if your if your colors are yeah, actually creating you, values get, if you're struggling with values get flipping your color palette in a black and gray photo it's going to give you a better idea oh that's not going to work or the con that's not going to contrast because it might look good on the skin at that moment but what you don't want in time is everything to fall flat because it will unless you're going for a very subtle change in tone it's going to fall flat so you have to be really careful with how that works you know what i mean um but I think there's, again, those are fundamentals, you know? So what's your plans for next year? Like what, what's, what do you, what do you got planned for next year besides recovery on your hand? Yeah, definitely. After I already told you, you better hit the ground running. Like, I mean, you know me, I mean, this is, I'm just building up in, in a positive way, angst. Like, I'm just like, when can I tattoo again? Like, Jesus Christ, give me something. You just got to work at it. Yeah. So after the recovery, after all this BS of my own doing gets done, I mean, I'm just going to hit this with like a formality or I guess, how would you say, like a new ignited passion to just take this to the next level. Like, and I guess that's going to be going and going to more seminars. Like uh, I learned so much from yours Uh, uh, and just like just researching more. I need to research more. I need to understand just art better because a lot of times I'll get comfortable in the way I do tattoos. And then uh, I've had you hit me up and be like, yo man, that's too flat. Yeah. And I'm stoked about it. And then I'm like, when I see the outside looking in, I'm like, oh yeah, he's right. But you have to study. Studying is, is important and there's different levels of study. So there's a level where you're just looking at reference, watching the anime, cartoon movie, whatever you're doing. And then there's a point where you take your own uh, real life things and put light on it and change like, Fuck around with it a little bit. Yeah, even like the statues here, like because that's what's going to take your tattoo into the next level. Yeah, definitely. All right, so if you had any message to tell these tattooers nowadays, what would you say? Somebody coming into the industry. I get that one a lot. What Do you have any tips for me? I'm I'm trying to be a tattooer. uh, One, like if this is what you want to do, don't let anything stop you and go with just tenacity. Like there was n- like, if they asked me to jump, I was like, how high do you want me to jump? You want 10 feet? Well, let's do 15. Like I'm here to like, there was nothing Clint could do to stop me. And that's what prided Clint. I Did was you the, get paid? Oh, no, God, no. I was, but I'm also Clint was Clint's apprenticeships weren't, weren't nice. I'm the only successful apprentice he ever had in 15 yeah. years of tattooing. Cause I was, I refused to quit. There's plenty of times Clint was like, get the fuck out of my shop. I don't need you here anymore. And I showed up the next day. Yeah. I, there wasn't, you couldn't stop me. Like, I, I'm going to die on this hill because yeah. t- I need tattooing. I love it. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't even touched a tattoo machine yet. I didn't ask questions either. Like, no, you did, yeah. trust, if you get a mentor, one, don't just ask anybody for an apprenticeship. 
Look at you should try to apprentice under somebody whose your art you want your tattoos to look like because you're gonna reflect them. Uh, and then two, um, like, don't like I said, don't let anything stop you. Like if they tell you no, and that's the person you want to learn from, figure out a way to win them over. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think nowadays a lot of it's. Again, I'm not going to get into it too much. I've talked about it already so much. Uh, people feel like they're owed everything. I grew up with knowing that nobody owes you anything. And I think if you have that mentality, God forbid you fail at whatever you're doing, it's going to hurt less because you didn't feel that entitlement to This is mine already. It's good to have the mentality like I will be a tattooer. I will be a painter or a lawyer, whatever. It's good to have that mental like affirmation or law of attraction on your side. But going into any industry and anything you do in life and thinking you are owed it, you're going to fail. Oh, yeah. You're going to fail. I mean, like I said, you're, you're going to die if you hold on to that ego. That yeah. ego needs to be, if you have that, you're already starting with failure. Yeah. Like go in here and be humble. Be great. That's yeah. it. Be grateful. Be grateful that that person even is willing to give you any of their experience because they went through blood, sweat, and tears. 100%. Like, our, jour our journey wasn't easy. And I'm giving you the cheat sheet. I'm giving it to you. Yep. All I'm asking for you is to is to show me Be how, responsible how grateful it. you are. Show that you're me. willing yeah. to work, that you're willing to earn it. That's all I ask. I think that... Um the future tattooing needs to be reminded of that. And that's why I think it is good to talk about it, but I don't want to keep circling around the same thing unless the artist talks about it. Sure. But, um, I definitely want to talk to tattooers more on a real level, like intimate in a way where we're really talking about this because tattooing has changed. Everything's going to change. I get that. Oh yeah. But we don't want it to change in a way where it's bad and people become lazy and like, like, do you know that whole ignorant style, bro? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. It's what? called ignorant style. What? And it's like if Ezio tattooed a little stick figure horse. Oh, you mean like the little he... scratchy tattoos? Yeah. And it's like, I get it. I've Expressionist, it's like whatever. Patchwork everywhere on their bodies. Mm -hmm. It's just outlines. It's nothing. Yeah, but it's it's dumb, but it's like, there's no but form formation to the it. The artist part of me says, fuck it. That's what they want to do. Let them do it. But the tattooer disciplined achieve or established person that I've worked really hard to be, it hates on that because it's like, bro, you didn't even try. But then again, I don't know. Maybe that person did try everything yeah, in the world. I've seen those and they'll get so a hundred thousand likes. And I'm like, it blows what? my mind. You know what I think so too? I think people look at it like an achievable tattoo. I can afford that. That's a you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I've gotten emails, huh? We've gotten emails where people are like, Oh, I don't know if I could ever afford you. Yeah. And it's because they see what, but, I, but yeah, like I want to give you something sick. Yeah. I mean, just save up your money. I think also a reason why the whole apprentice thing is such a thing is because a lot of people aren't understanding, like for you, for instance, art is a part of your soul. Mm -hmm. Like it is who you are. And for us, like in our relationship, I understand that it is has a lot of value yeah. in who you are as a person. So there are times when, where some people might be like, oh, well, he's putting that first. And it's like, no, this is who he is. Yeah. And it provides yeah. a life for us too. So it's not that I ever feel like I'm put on the back burner. No. But for you to teach someone, for you to take them under your wing and to give them knowledge and things that you've accomplished throughout your entire career, you're giving them a piece of you. Yeah. And it is more of an intimate thing for you because you've gone through the depths of despair with this. Like yeah. you've crawled through the well, valleys, that's a, and, and through so the trenches. Well, she, yeah. And like, I don't look at it like that. She can see it more in a, in a spectator view of it. To me, it's normal, but I have struggled a lot for my art. I've been through for real. I've been through hell and back to just fight for my art. And so I think that I take it very, very serious. I try and have a little bit of humor with it, but it does, it's really important to me. So it's really one of those things like art is not an easy thing that just, oh yeah, I just do, you know, I do tattoos. And then people meet me and they're like, oh, you, oh, your husband, or like they'll meet her. Oh, your husband's tattoo artist. And they're like, oh, okay. And then she'll show them, look, this is what he does. Oh shit. 
That's what I want. I want the response. My I live and one of the, the main, recognition. No, no I love having an effect on people. Yeah. Oh, my work. I don't care about anything else. Seeing like, the fruits of your labor. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. his own form of success. Like for that's me, his, that's his own accomplishment. It does. I think that's what a lot of people get miss. Um, yeah, because they're caught up with awards and shit. Well, it's not even that. Everyone has their own level of what success is. Some people, it's a monetary value. Some people, it's being in the newspaper. Some people, it's people knowing their name. You know what I mean? Yeah. For him, his is just people noticing the difference between him and somebody else. Or if I can, yeah, that's a big one. Or if I can give another tattooer a little piece of advice that changes everything for them, bro, I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. I want sure. to help you, but I want to help you in a genuine way. I'm not like, oh, look, I'm teaching you and I'm going to record everything so I can post it and say, look, I taught you. No, that's not a thing. Like posting no, about you do things without even asking. For yeah. A favor yeah. Back. But to me, it's so it's so weird that people don't do that automatically. I do that shit because that's just what I feel is the right thing to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, I mean. There, there's there's no greater feeling than like you tattoo somebody and you see them like look at their tattoo and in the mirror and they just like start glowing. For me, like like what Kim was saying, there was like my buddy Rudy. He has like a, a Sith sleeve I did with Darth Maul and all that stuff. And the Darth Maul's on the top of his form. He went to the Galaxy's Edge right here at Disney. And this is why I love tattooing. Beside no likes, comments, and I do appreciate everyone who does like and comment yeah. my stuff. Because those people support us. And that needs to be remembered amongst tattooers that, and I say it almost every podcast, your clients make you. You ain't no rock star. Oh, yeah. You are nothing without your clients. And if you don't recognize that, you're going to be flat on your ass before you know it. Yeah. Remember that without your clients, you are nothing. The whole rock star mentality, loopy in your, I don't understand that. I don't understand why people think that's going to last. They won't. But like. Disappear. Gal, he's at he's at the galaxy's edge, and then you know the the generals and the stormtroopers that come oh, around yeah, they'll yeah. harass you. You know, did I tell you this story? Yeah, what maybe? So then they go out to my buddy Rudy. It's his birthday, and his friends are with him. So all of his boys are like, "Oh, pick him, pick him!" Like to like harass him, like mess with him a little bit. And one of the generals comes up with three stormtroopers to Rudy, like, "Oh, have you seen the rebel scum?" Like just playing, you know, role playing with him. And Rudy's like. No, 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 whatever. And then one of the stormtroopers nudges the general and he's like, huh? And then the general's like listening and he looks down at Rudy's arm where the Darth Maul is and he goes, oh, carry on. It seems you're with us already. <laughs> yeah. That right there, dude, dude, is the shit. You're you're part of the Sith. That is so cool that that tattoo, and I'm not saying I did it, what's up? No. I'm saying that tattoo took that person to that experience at Disney to the next level because they they took something that's personal to him and then they added and it broke to it that into experience. The character. Yes. yes. And then they, they brought him into that. And to me, that is the greatest reward. Or when somebody's parents are against, and you could be, I, I tattoo people who are who are damn near 40 years old or whatever. And they still are weary about what their parents are going to think. And that's totally fine. I think that's actually pretty awesome. That means they're close to their family. And I love when these people get tattooed and they go home and then they're like, bro, my mom loved the tattoo and she hates tattoos. That's a payoff for me. Yeah. And that should be a payoff for every, anybody who does anything like that artistically. That's the payoff. So Chris, next year, man, you're going to step it up. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you need to stop bullshitting around. <laughs> I think you should stop riding bikes, but I understand. Do you love well, that I mean, stuff? I've been on a bike since I was three. But what are you going to do different? Tattooing-wise? No, 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 no. What are you going to do different oh, on the bike? Oh, I'm going to wear helmets. You're gonna, do you hear that? He didn't wear a helmet. Now he's going to wear helmets. Yeah, I don't feel like having my, my skull glued back No, together, dude. Man. Come on. Get it together. Hey, I mean, I got lucky. I should have died. I know it. And so, luckily, I'm still here. No more of that. You're going to focus on your recovery. Yeah. Take your time with it, but make sure it's done right, you know, and because the thing is, if you rush into it and you go back to tattooing and you mess your hand up again, you're going to be back on remission for even yeah, longer. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm pushing it back. So yeah, keep up with the anime tattoos. You're doing good. Um, you need to do better. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> DC. All right, Batman. Hey. Yeah, I'll let it slide. 
We can do I that, mean, man. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm just uh, definitely, it's hard getting, breaking out of what like, it's just like, it's now in my, it's in my roots to just be a traditional guy and pull out a fat nine. Well, you got to figure it out because I think being a jack of all trades is good, but I've done that myself. And one thing I've noticed when, when I do too many different styles, it's not really doing anything for me because people know me as the, the Harry Potter, Disney, pop culture guy. If I break off and do something more custom, which I would love to do that, it's not going to do shit for me. I've done it. And it's like, doesn't do anything for me. Unless it's like the hyper realistic stuff. You know what I mean? What's, like what's motivated me actually is One Piece. Like I got into it because somebody asked me for a Luffy and I didn't, hadn't watched it. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of over all the pirate bullshit. And, uh, but I was like, I don't, I don't want to just get something off Google. I need to know what makes Luffy Luffy. Yeah, it's good just to pause it. So I started watching it. And then now I sucked into it. And I'm like, dude, this is the greatest thing I've ever watched ever. And now I'm like, so I'm like, dude, all I want to do right now, like I, for a little bit, I was like, all I want to do is one piece sleeves and stuff like that. One and thing I'll tell you, if you're going to pull frames from YouTube, you need to make sure you go and watch the original um, actual material from like Funimation or like if you own the seasons. Here's the reason why a lot of times YouTube and I've heard it's because they want to avoid copyright infringement or get in trouble for using material from the actual anime. They'll flip the the whole anime. Oh, to where like and the so hair you're, be facing the wrong way. And so way. like if you do Luffy, all right, let me quiz you right now. And this is how much I don't know One Piece, but I know the little details. What side is Luffy's scar on? His left eye. Yeah, that's right. But I've watched animes where it's on this side yeah, because they up. flip it for the video. I, I saw him do that with Shanks. Yes, it, right, it right, three right, scars, right, 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 right. And then they put it on this. No, yeah. they put it on this side. Yeah. And so that's wrong. And so just be careful when you're doing, and this is for all you artists out there. Uh, just make sure you cross reference what you're tattooing because you can mess stuff up. And then if I put the scars right here on Luffy, the internet won't let you live it down. Like, oh, you, yeah, and then, sure. and then the thing is you'll lose more clients that way. It's like, uh, when you, we were talking about, like, we've seen people flip Goku and you don't know it unless you watch Dragon Ball Z, but like oh, the, hair the is fall going. of his hair, he's got this so, one, like hair that falls over. It's, it's not over. that because it, if Goku looks this way, and he looks that way, it does change. But it's where that chunk, that big chunk of hair is more to the left or to the right. That's the big one. Or I've seen people accidentally put Vegeta's hair on Goku before. Oh, yeah, big time. I'm like, dude, well, yeah, yeah. come on. you! It's such a good tattoo. So just make sure that, you know, all artists, you guys, you know, cross, you know, cross reference your reference. Like, because we'll just, like, get into the character. If you're doing pop no culture. No way. Because, it, yeah, yeah, get like, into the know character. the character. But I'm not going to go watch One Piece. No, you don't have to. Well, like, I used to do that though. I used to. I like used you, to. You would, you're like, all right, cool. Um, you want Third Gear Luffy? Where's Third Gear Luffy appear? And you'd watch one or two episodes. But this whole thing is, I, I, yes, exactly. That's what I do. I, I look at where the character is that I needed tattoo. I watch a couple episodes and I go back and uh, I, sometimes I'll type in everything you need to know about Luffy Gear Five. Boom, yeah. everything, and then I'll go back and watch the show. So there's different ways to do it. You don't have to watch the whole show. Yeah, a movie, a movie series. Yeah, we'll just watch it. Because you get into that zone and you that feel yeah, of that character. For sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I can't wait to see what you do next year. Uh, you hit me up with any critiques you want, and we're going to knock it out. Oh, yeah. And you're going to get better. You have to. Yeah. I'm not saying you're a bad tattooer now, but you everybody can get better. Oh, that's what I want. All right, we're going to end the show like this. You, you don't know about this. Oh, damn it. Don't do it. Yo, I'm going to do it right now. Shit. Kim hasn't changed her list. Zombie apocalypse is happening right now. Boom, they're knocking at the door. You have five things on you. What It can be anything you want. You can't see a lightsaber. It's not real. It has to be real things. So, like, think about it like GTA. Boom, it'll just drop or it's in your possession already. You got five things on you. What is it? Uh, like Think a, about it. Like, a, all right. So, nine millimeter pistol. With, okay, so with weapons, we have rules now. Okay. You have one clip only. You can say extended clip. It doesn't matter. Oh, then I want an AR. Hands okay. Down. So with one clip, I don't know too much about guns. Well, depending on what caliber you have, depends on uh, how you go to. Oh, boy. What? Can I, you just, I'm from Texas. So then you piss, get, if you're going to get specific about it, you need to say, okay, AR with da 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 You can't see a scope and this and that and no. that because that's extra stuff. No, I need an AR-15 wild. That's what I need. Okay. One mag. Okay. Okay. What else? Um, I'm going to want a Bowie knife. Okay. Uh. And this is stuff to fight them or just to survive? Survive. 
Okay, I'm gonna need some kind of uh, survival kit for like water and food and stuff like that. No, 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 no. You need a, you can save a first aid kit. You can't be just adding shit on there. You got Bowie knife and rifle. What else? Oh. You can save first aid kits. Fine. Mm. C four. What the? Heck? I don't Ooh, know. Where so are you we, going? So, all right. So oh, you're right. you're saying to do five things. We planned no. The way, the way I planned out no, my zombie No, five things to survive. So, like for example, mine was a purification straw, a katana. That even though a katana can be both double standard, because if you're in a tight area, you're screwed. Uh, a flint rod, a backpack, and a pistol. Mine kind of changes between a pistol and a flashlight. So mine was we just. Where are you going to go during a zombie? That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're right here, right now. Right now. The Shit. They're right, right there. Now. Boom, 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 boom. What are you doing? Probably shooting myself, to be honest. So, <laughs> you, get, you need five things. Right, you got, got a Bowie knife, a rifle. Um, a, a canteen of water. Okay. Um, rope. Oh, okay, that's I a good one. Rope's a good one. I have people say rope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's... Uh, and then when I run out of bullets, uh, like one of those, uh, like two and a half foot miniature shovels. I need something to do. A shovel. Myself. Yeah. So you're more on the survivor, go out and scavenger side of list. I'm or the, list of I'm the type things. that after I'm done with this, I'm trying to find somebody else to rob and take your shit. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm coming <laughs> across hey, this in the, a zombie the, apocalypse. The, the strong survive. The, all, the, the only thing survive. is, the rifle's good, but the sec, that rifle, I'm assuming, shoots, da, 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 right? Well, I mean, yeah. Or okay, so that's a problem or, because... Or, 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 yeah, okay, semi-automatic, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can have it on semi I or think, full. I think a semi would be the best, because if you go full, pop, 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 that wasting. magazine's gone. Yeah, you're And wasting. then that gun, is, you, you're going to have to go find the, the... Bullets for it. The bullets for it, and it's... You're screwed. You're not screwed. It just causing more trouble. For me, the purification straw, I can find a new puddle of water somewhere and drink out of that. That's what you, I'm saying. You can also make your own shit. I don't know if y'all have this in California, but in Texas, we find uh, a Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops. We have both of them. Why are you, you guys, acting like we're all like preppy? Why, hey, yeah. Well, because. But why do you think that that is going to be there? It's like, no, bro, that's, that's like, place to go. That's, that's where where everyone's guns. gonna go. And they, though. Have, they have a fish, a giant fish tank. Those fish are gonna breed, and you you have a Every food source. Gonna They're gonna be zombies, bro. You block it. No, everyone. Everybody. Everyone so by the time you get to the Cabela's or the zombie. Bass Pro, they're gonna be everything's gonna be gone. Shoot everybody. Yeah, they're gonna be gone. I'm gonna treat it like. <laughs> oh, there's gonna be. Your, I was about to say some bad shit, but I won't say it. I was going to say, you don't have, if you're relying on getting everything there, you're not going to have anything in your possession. Yeah, but that's why I, I want them to get it because I'm going to take all their shit. All you're doing. When oh, you go, he's when baiting you, them. When, he's, you, when you go and do that, all you're doing is you're getting a but, bunch of supplies for the toughest so guy on the block. Here's the thing, I'm though. Here's be. the thing, though. You have to look at You're here at the shop. You're not at home. You're not in tech. You're here at the shop. The closest Cabela's or Bass Pro is in Victoria Gardens. How far so is how? That? No, it's not that far. They have one. There's one in Irvine. Okay, let's see. Like she already has it mapped out. See, but so the I'm, problem I'm, is, <laughs> Kim, where are you at? Where you, you at? Have to think, you have to think work. of it though. The phone doesn't work. Shit. You have to think of it though. By the time you think about going to the Cabela's or Bass Pro, people that are already there and it's happening, they're gonna take everything, bro. Be and even the cover. workers are gonna be like, "I'm taking this, 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 this." It's gone. It's over. So I'm I don't go think around and rob people. That's your best survival. So you're you're a there's, thief. There's only so many supplies you can. You're get. You're a bandit. Yeah, there's only some so many supplies you can get. So eventually your supplies are going to run out. You need to find some. No, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, this is a different approach like those, to what people like have been saying. Those world preppers, those are the people you need to find. Those people. What who did, do, I want to, I want to need to watch Annabelle's episode. She said some stu she different said stuff. She said her too. dog. She, she said would dogs. take her dog. Well, I mean, yeah, because I guess and then I was like, if I get hungry. I was like for bait. And not, she was like, no. Not to <laughs> eat, to keep alive with her. But that's what I'm saying. That dog's dying. For but sure. that's what I'm saying. People will always have, and that's what I like about the question. I have, like I've said it before, I have a very unhealthy obsession with zombies. Oh, God, no. And I'm terrified of I zombies. I love it, but terrified. it scares the crap out of me. You know what I mean? So so that's your five things. A Bowie knife, rifle. Water canteen. Water canteen. Rope. Rope. I forgot what the fifth one was. Shovel. Oh, shovel. Shovel. So you're more on the, like, you're the hunter mode. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Did you, I think the back tap. 
Because you can I, only live three days without water. If you don't have no, water, I know that, done. but I think the backpack is is essential. Yeah, you have to. Well, I, I, you okay. don't have a backpack though. Yeah, no, I'll have to do something with the rope. Yeah, you can make like a little. Yeah, just hold things to me. <laughs> tied to your leg. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Here's my here's my other question. <laughs> Let's say you have like a survival backpack in your car, like okay. you're already prepped. Yeah, go bag. Yeah, like does that count as one item? No. Yeah, but, because. No, because yeah, yes, have because in it, oh, right? so that's a good way to look at it. You know what I mean? I think it's already prepped and done. Yeah, I mean, I'd count it as an item. I think that what I say when I say five items is you can't take a backpack and say I'm going to pack with all the shit because all that's one one oh, individual okay. thing. But like, if you already have, you have the a go backpack, bag. Like, if you, you have, have a go bag, bag that has well, a then, flashlight, like, that's I think that's just well, one like item. Sure, I'll knives, let that. Yeah, I think that's good. Now you unscrew the bottom. It's got a compass, a fire starter, the water. So then you say. So then you say that that kind of Bowie knife. Yeah. They have those. That's what you would get. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. If you want to be gangster, you can get the, the Bowie knives with the button on it with a CO2 cartridge, and it shoots air. I see that. And it bl it'll Crazy. blow someone's head up. Crazy. Did you use that on zombies? But the thing is, for me, though, too, I noticed that um, somebody had said one that I, I like when I asked a question online at some point, somebody said, it'd be cool if you had a radio. I'm like, Damn. But, I've never thought of that. A well, radio, like a walk, like a big radio. No, you you need like a like, like a, a military satellite. radio. You need a satellite. The other radio. one, who's Tara and I always talk about that. She's like, I, you need to get one. Yeah, but can you I trust somebody she's... on the other side of that radio? Huh? They're, they're can you trust somebody on the other side of the radio? I mean, you have to take the chance at some point. Because if it's somebody like me, I'm going to lure you like it, like you're good. Like I'm nice. Oh, and so then I'm gonna, so I'm gonna kill we can't you. be around yeah, Chris when it goes down. Well, you're my people. You're good. Yeah, but like for instance, with if I don't Tara, know, he's gonna end up looking like Robin Williams from Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for forty years. For instance, with Tara, she's like, we would have like a channel to make sure we're okay, type of thing. Yeah, and yeah. Then we'd yeah. have to plan. But the thing is, like, you'd have to have it planned with somebody. People can know. scan you though and find your channel. Yeah, or how much time uh, are you wasting if she? But do you died see? And you're sitting there for a day. There's a pro and con to time. everything you choose. The purification shawl. You have to have like a code. That little purification, the filter's gonna run out. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna. That's have to why either, I went to canteen, so at least I can hold the water. But you have to know how to. You can boil it and shit, right? Yes. But then you're gonna have to. What are you yeah, gonna boil it in? Yeah, but do you have a pot? You're gonna go find that. Yeah. He's more of a scavenger. He'd go find it. Yeah, because I mean, we'd you, all be scavengers. Because I mean, if you have a yeah, pistol and I have an AR, I'm winning that gunfight every so time. So the gun, the gun, you run out of ammo. You're going to be carrying around this weight for how long? Or why don't you, you just ammo? keep that gun for robbing people and use a shovel for the zombies? Yeah, but you do you know how? Are we doing old bro, school? you're acting like you're slicing through butter. Are we? Are we doing old school zombies? Like, where yes, just, we're not. We're squished. We can't do the 28 days later because they're There's you're, no surviving just now. stand there and die because they can run. Or you're gonna have to hide. They you, can run no forever. Point. You have to yeah. like barricade mm -hmm. yourself. That, that's the scariest movie I've ever watched. I it was love 28 that. days later. It terrifies. I love it. Me. No, yeah. my worst fear. I figured. I figured. I used to say being surrounded by zombies, having no way out, and then obviously open water. My worst fear boils down to being absolutely helpless. If I cannot, if I have no way, I'd rather fist fight a grizzly yeah. bear than be an open ocean. You're not. No, I'm saying I'm not going to win that at all. What do you mean I'm going to win it. At least ocean. I can stand up. I would jump on the grizzly bear's back, gouge his eyes out and eat him. Like you're not on a boat in the open ocean? No, if you're in the. Yeah, like you're floating. So if you look it up, divide your body weight by 15. That's how much a fish has to weigh. Bill Nye, to the science guy, has, a, has appeared again. So if you're 150 pounds, a 10 pound fish can pull you underwater. That's true. That's terrifying that's scary yeah think about you the people that fish there. think about the people that like fish float. those crazy fish and it, it's like Bruh. bending would their, you yeah. not just <gasps> float like i feel like i would pull no, my whole pull, body no. up you to the think surface a shark so weighs no. a, a, a small shark weighs an easy 300 pounds yeah i'll take you down you're, you're, you're done that's over yeah what are you gonna do to how did like you we, angelina jolie in the movie she punches it that's not realistic well, how do we even get into talking about this i'm just saying my worst fear is being that's absolutely fear. helpless so Anyways, open ocean. I think that's a good list for your style of survival. I don't What's think you're in the last that long. To get to the no. next place? I mean, you're going to have to be brutal. Like, yeah. And you're going to have to this be survival. ready. Because I don't give a shit unless I I'm, think if somebody sees you like beating someone up, like 10 more people are going to just jump and you're out. I got an AR. I'm taking that. <laughs> well, like, for instance, this plaza, like, every single person right here is a zombie besides. Us. Well, so that's so that goes into the thing. Am I going up against ten zombies or fifteen? It doesn't matter. Know. That's unpredictable. We don't know. You have that's no what idea. Because 
But that's what I'm saying. The the it doesn't matter what five items you have. If there's a, an a, an enormous amount of zombies, you're not. But it's that a no collection of the list. Yeah. That like, it has to be universally round. For me, it is more of a survival list because I got the backpack, I got the flint rod, I got the purification straw. I have, and again, I know it's oh, it's not the fair. katana, pistol or katana or pistol or and flashlight. Katana. I'd say the pistol because I got her, and because and then katana, katana. No matter what, I'm cutting through you. But again, here's you're eventually gonna get tired. But here's swimming. the reality of it though, too. We're gonna get more like this. How we're getting right now about this list. A katana, as cool as it sounds, do you know how hard? I'm. You have to know how to swing that. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna be hitting them with the side of the That's blade. That's what I'm saying. A, a good shovel. I mean, or like a tonto blade would be good. Tonto blade is closer contact, but I think you have. It's, it's faster. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Shovel or Bowie knife, I'm good. <laughs> Duct tape so you can wrap your entire body with it. <laughs> yeah, you could. Like, a like what is it, the, the telephone, the the phone books? I'm and all, then wrap I that like Debo. My hey, list is just a bunch of tissue armor and put it around and duct tape it. Yeah. yeah I'm padded. They, they do it in the movies. Brad Pitt did it. If he did it, it's all good. Or like you're wearing a long sleeve jacket, gloves, and let's say a helmet. You're like no fingerless taping. gloves. She was You're like taping the helmet, spa- taping the glove. I said a space blanket. Space or- blanket. What's that? Oh, bro. To keep you warm. So space blanket is like the foil blankets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a guy that he was on like 30 something degree weather and it heated him up to 56 degrees. That's so a lot. So you survived Mount Everest. I mean, you I'm sure, but enough. it's a but he was more stationary. He wasn't like actually climbing a mountain. He was yeah. just making a point these things work. And she's like, "Well, how they can you can fit them in your wallet, and they're well, heat the ten by ten. I should get to use the Harry Potter cloak. That's not real. It has to if be. If you dream deal. it, you can win it. No, that's no. like saying I'm gonna go out with a lightsaber. I mean, lightsaber is OP. Period. You 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 would survive <laughs> you forever. Can't. I don't even know why. Well, if you had one, it's not in real, real though. Life. But it, it, there's real ones. Are you gonna carry around that pack? Like it's not stupid. And what? it probably goes out. It does." Yeah. Does a lightsaber go out? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. The one that they made, it's like a, you have like a backpack thing on. It's a real, it's, have you seen the new one Disney's coming out with? No. You go, and they really come out. Death becomes they come out, type sh- No way. I, yeah. I'm not lying to you. I mean, I for, it, it's in, a motorized, coma, like, I lost everything. Like, my friend was like, you know, the Texas Rangers won the World Series, right? And I was like, no. They're like, oh, yeah, you were asleep for that. Like, damn. You just missed everything. Yeah, I missed everything. There was also um, a meteor that hit in Japan. Really, dude? You're doing this to me? <laughs> what are you doing? doing this to me. Got I just... <laughs> and the world just keeps going. That's not fair. Anyways, Chris, that's a good list. Uh, that's good. That, but I'm telling I you I think right you're going to have to work harder. I Well, I have to work like that because the only thing that's going to keep me alive is my... Pure determination to take things. So you're not. Because you're you're more. Scared the you're shit more combative, not stealth. Oh yeah, I'm not. No, I'm I not think I'm guy. like in the middle. I'm I'm going in at like Rambo. Like yeah, right. yo, I'm either surviving or I'm not. All right, you want to do us out with the voices? Let's see what you got. So Arabella jumps on here at the end of the podcast, and she starts popping off. Go for it. Do it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Wait, what? Oh my god, this is us? Yes, this is terrifying. It's funny because when I talk into it, I change my voice like in real voice like that. When I don't need to. That booty smell good though. <laughs> Stank <laughs> booty boy. <laughs> oh, uh, the old turn cut. Give me a different one. Pop it off. Yeah, that one's cleaner. See? I feel like, like I'm very white. Oh, hey, yeah. Yeah. Lightweight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Square up, punk. <laughs> you don't want these hands. This is what people think Chris really sounds like in real life. I mean, it really is. When they see him, he's got those Kanye West cheeks. <laughs> this is wild. As we should have done the whole podcast like this, nobody would understand what the hell we're saying. <laughs> you have the hot, the low guy, and I'd be this guy. That'd be sick. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one too. Take me back to the OG voice. Hit him with the OG. Come on, that's not the OG voice. Yeah. Ah, bring it back to my voice. Yeah, just click it again. There we go. <laughs> that was wild. That was fun. Everybody likes to do that at the end of every podcast. So, all right, that. here we go. Uh, Chris, thanks again, man. I appreciate you coming by. Dude, thank You've you. You've been here man. for a week, and it's been cool hanging out. You're leaving tomorrow. Yes, Going sir. Going back home, I need you to focus 
study, relax, and work on your hand and get back to it. Oh, yeah. Change the game one tattoo at a time. They ain't ready. Chris Oltua, everybody. Thank you again for watching, for Thanks joining for us. Um, we have a lot more guests coming, more episodes coming every next year. We're trying to do like one a week, so we'll see. But Chris, thanks again for coming by. It's what's your Instagram again? It's Chris Anime Tattoos. You got it. Thanks there for it letting is. me come here, man. This is awesome. This no, is my yeah. first time doing this, so if I fucked it up, it's whatever. But <laughs> this is this is fun. No, it's all good, man. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, man. All right, man. Love you guys. See you later. Later.